Sealant field testing is limited to dry installation testing only. And just like painting, it is always best to perform mock-ups and testing prior to commencing the actual installation. Vertical sealants are installed over backer eye to ensure proper depth and joint shape. The best final test to ensure a quality vertical installation is a sealant pull test, as demonstrated next. Another common failure is improper adhesion of a caulking to the concrete surface. Today I'm going to show you how to test the caulking for proper adhesion. What you'll first want to do is get a box cutter blade to allow you to cut into the actual caulking. You'll want to caulk two vertical strips, slits as close as you can to the actual concrete. What you'll want to do is cut the top of where the two slits begin to create a pull tab. Once you've created that pull tab, you'll want to pull the caulking straight down. What you're looking for is that the caulking breaks off at the stress point of the bottom of the pull tabs and does not allow the caulking to pull from the sides of the concrete. So you see how the caulking broke at the bottom of the slits. This caulking has been installed properly and it is bonding properly to the concrete. After the pull test is complete, it is also good practice to visually inspect the pull tab to ensure the depth or thickness of the material is half the width and depth and never more than a half an inch deep. So a two inch joint should be no more than a half inch deep. A three quarter inch joint should be three eighths inch deep. It's also good to visually inspect the dried material to ensure a consistent color and that the material is properly cured with no wet spots. Proper joint filler installation requires the material to be well mixed to avoid soft spots, properly cured to a shore hardness of 85 or greater, and the joint profile is flush without interruption. Again, the whole idea about joint filler installation is to support wheel load as it travels from concrete slab to concrete slab over the joint without interruption. All of this can be done by the subcontractor as part of their quality control program or followed up by one of our team to make sure that we have a successful installation prior to turnover to the owner. Please see the following demonstration of typical visual inspections that can be done on site with a very few number of tools. The key to any joint installation job is, is proper preparation. Easy to find out, but if you want to make sure that you're walking out on the job when the installer first gets started cleaning joints, then just double check. Take a look inside the joint, make sure in fact that he is not cleaning full depth, maybe take a five-in-one, uh, a key, a uh, pocket knife, and just double check. Just check straight the bottom of the joint, actually check it, and make sure in fact it is a full depth fill. So field testing for joint fillers consists of basically three items. One is a nice flush fill, so you'd want to be able to, to rub your hand or your foot across the joint and you shouldn't feel an interruption in the joint filler. Second thing is look into a visual inspection. Make sure you've got a good consistent gray color, that you're not seeing any modeling, no soft spots or wet spots in the sealant. And then finally would be the hardness. And uh, hardness can be checked you know, with, a, with a key, pressing on the filler to make sure that it is in fact hard and rigid, able to accept a wheel load or transfer a wheel load from slab to slab without interruption, uh, without allowing the shoulder to be hit. Your better contractors or your larger sealant installers are also going to have a durometer that they can check for shore hardness. All of these materials, according to ACI, should be testing up on a shore hardness, uh, shore A of 85 plus. So what we're looking for is 85 plus, pretty simple. It, hold it down and you can see we're starting to get about a 90, 95 on the shore D or shore A and that means we've got a good hard filler and a good insulation.